Hi, I'm Colin G. West, and this is Poker Science. It's time to examine the art of set mining. That thing where you take a small pocket pair and you play it with the primary goal, or maybe the only goal, of winning big if you happen to flop a set. This is probably called set mining because you're going in search of a rare but valuable commodity hoping to get lucky and strike it rich. But for me, this also conjures up the image of a landmine. Because when not handled with care, the whole thing can blow up in your face. Let's start with the basics. We're imagining a scenario like this. A player is opened, and you look down and see a pair of fours. You decide to just call and see a flap, knowing that you'll almost certainly fold any sign of aggression unless you make your set. So what can we learn if we break this down mathematically? Let's start with the most fundamental percentage. How often will that elusive third four be waiting for you on the flop? The answer is that the odds are a little worse than one out of every eight times. That's how often your set mining attempt will actually strike gold. Now, if you only win one time out of eight, or worse, then basic expected value theory tells us that when you do win, you need to make at least eight times your money back, or more, in order to break even in the long run. And the math tells us that this is an uphill battle. Unless you're able to entice nine other players into the pot pre-flop, and I'm not sure I recommend that, then there aren't going to be enough chips there initially to justify a set mining attempt. This means you have to go in knowing that when you do make your set, you need to get more chips into the pot after the flop. A lot more. But here's the real problem. Even if you make your set, there's no guarantee that you'll be the one walking away with the chips. Your opponent might have you beat. She might get there by the river. She might get scared and fold. Or you might get scared and fold to a raise that's too big for you to stomach. There's just no way to know for sure. All of these things will occasionally happen and reduce your winnings from time to time. This has to be factored into the long-term averages. Mathematically speaking, this means that when you do win big, you have to make even more than eight or nine times your money back in order to be getting ahead. Because of this, there are some famous old rules of thumb that say you shouldn't go set mining unless you can expect to win back 15 or even 20 times your initial investment. That is to say, 15 or 20 times the size of the initial price you paid to see the flop. Now frankly, it's impossible to build a mathematical model that takes into account every relevant variable here. This is why the recommendation ranges from 15 to 20 times your investment, and why even those numbers are just guidelines and not rigorous calculations. As always, it's important to adjust your gameplay given your position at the table and the other players in the game. But this brings us to two important caveats. First, the size of your opponent's stack is always important in Hold'em, but it's particularly important if you want to go set mining. And this is simply because the size of their stack puts an absolute cap on the number of chips you can expect to win post-flop. Suppose, for example, that the only other player in the hand has a small stack of about 10 big blinds. The math tells us it's extremely difficult, if not impossible, to set mine profitably here, no matter how well you play the hand. That's simply because there aren't enough chips out there to be won, even if you make your set and play it beautifully. Now, caveat number two you have to remember that your set is not all powerful. Because making your set is such a rare occurrence, there's a psychological tendency to get overexcited and become committed to your hand. But if, say, the board has a straight and a flush showing and your opponent is happily betting every street, you might want to ask yourself if it's time to happily walk away. Remember, in a real mathematical sense, chips you don't lose are just as valuable as chips that you win. And of course, like any strategy, you shouldn't plan to go set mining every time you get a small pocket pair, or your opponents may begin to pick up on this. Mix things up and keep yourself a little unpredictable, or all the math in the world won't do you any good. 